Good morning Celtic fans and welcome back to the channel. Today's target for thumbs up is 300 so make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you find the video. Today's Celtic FC news, John Hartson is actually raging at the fact that Celtic are going to sell a player for way under what he thinks the player is valued at. We talk about the Parkhead defenders, we talk about two defenders that have an excellent record together and did a Sevco player just concede the title in January. Looks like the Sevco have actually conceded already and are after just the two cups. We talk about the big grumpy Greek who's on his way to out of Celtic by the looks of it. Fabrizio Romano says that Sampdoria is the latest club to come in for him. They're actually inquiring about him and then we'll go into the comments section. So let's jump back to the John Hartson story. John Hartson is absolutely bemused the fact that a couple of weeks ago we were talking that Celtic were looking for 15 million for Joseph Juranovic and there seems to be a clause. Now, when you look back in Juranovic's history, he has this, how can you say, he's, he's had a bit of controversy in his career when it goes back to transfers and the fact that Celtic obviously valued him last summer at 15 million and it looks like he might be on his way out the door for seven um, it's, it's, no, it's no surprise when you actually look into it and you look at some of the stories from his previous contract dealings so he's either got a really good agent or he's just a complete chancer uh, so Hartson went on to say we go back just last week and we were talking about 20 million is one of the best and brightest right backs in the World Cup, said Hartson on radio. Hakim was fantastic. He's at PSG and he's probably on 150 grand a week. He was a good creator from Morocco. Juranovic was equally as good, and you're talking 7 million. It is unbelievable, John Hartson went on to say. I don't know the structure of the deal, agents, etc., fees, blah, blah, blah. But um, when you look at it, he, when you look into some of the dealings that Juranovic's agent has had before, there has been a bit of controversy and one team never actually received a penny for Juranovic and that is still going through the courts with UEFA. So moving on, we'll move on to a couple of um, defenders. Big Welsh looks to be on his way out of Celtic. So what does that mean for the defenders that are at the club? we we'll talk about Starfield and Carter Vickers. They're partnership is actually quite immense. They have played 38 games where they've started together and they've never tasted defeat in any of them. That is some some going by itself. And what you need and what Celtic have always needed and what any team needs is your two central defenders to be on the same par with each other. The fact that Morris Jens has came in, Germans came in and he's never managed to break the two of them apart when Starfields came back into the team. So, that, but that being said, it looks like that's one of the reasons that Welsh wants to leave. The, well, I don't know if he wants to leave the club, but there is a few clubs looking at him. And with the arrival of Yoku Kubayashi, I mean, that would mean more time on the bench for him. So what does it say for other people in the squad? I would say if Welsh leaves, the likes of uh, Boson Wall would then make the jump. He's been with the first team the past couple of weeks. And I would say that he would make the first team, he, he would be more in the first team. And I would hope that he would stay in the first team because there's a few clubs down south actually looking at him also. And they want to try and steal him from Celtic. So we'll go to Sevco and they can't stop talking about us. It looks like Ryan Jack has admitted that his teammates are conceding the league already in January after failing to get a win. They got a draw against us just a week or so ago and it looks like they have came out and said, he said on Clyde 1, that's the aim for me and the team and the staff. Since the manager has come in, he said he wants to win both cups. So they've conceded the title already in January. But <laughs> obviously, uh, Jack's been there for a, a number of years and um, let's face it, he's only won one title in all these years and, Cel and Celtic have been dominant and they're back to the dominant force. They have, they have, <laughs> you have to laugh. They've conceded the title in January. Could you imagine if we ever conceded the title in January? Our fans would be up in arms. Anyway, moving on to the Grumpy Greek. Grumpy Greek, uh, Fabrizio Romano on Twitter has said that it looks like the Grumpy Greek is definitely on his way out the door in January. And one of the latest clubs to be linked with them is Sampdoria. They have asked for conditions of the deal. So they're basically looking, and it seems to be the way of modern football, and I think because of the impending um, financial crisis that are about to 
go into even more in the means of a recession. It looks like clubs are looking at loan players for the sort of half a season. The way that Celtic's done it over the last couple of seasons also, you get a player in on loan, you pay for the loan deal with an obligation to buy. It's not the option to buy, it's an obligation to buy. So then they have to pay. So they're basically paying the full transfer fee that Celtic are looking for, but they're also paying a little bit more as they are getting them in on loan for the first... So it's basically deferring payments. That's it's the easiest way to look at it. Rather than paying out £7 million just now, they're deferring the payments. And most football clubs know that with season ticket renewals, that's what they use for a lot of their money and they get their money at the end of the season for the competitions that they are in. So let's move on to the comment section of yesterday's video where Charlie Nicholas had a bit of a meltdown. And we'll see what you're saying about yesterday's video with the Celtic transfer battle that I'm commencing just now and the breaking Celtic FC transfer news. So we'll go to Robert Kennedy. First of all, he says Charlie Nicholas is a clown. And we all agree that it's one ex-Celtic player that never has a good word to say about Celtic and since he's left. Thomas Murray, he goes on to say one point. You cannot come back from liquidation. It's impossible. It's like coming back from the dead. Yep, and well, there's a club in Scotland that believes that they're the same club after going into liquidation and dying. Ian McKenzie says Champagne Charlie is a pellet. He is that. Donny Boy says the Huns are trying to show they're on a level par with everything with us. The reality is somewhat different, as we all know. Yep, the Rangers are basically skint. Um, the next one is Joseph. He says, hail, hail. Uh, the Contracts and Peter Law is back. There's actually one comment that I want to go to from yesterday and if I click there It was from a guy from South Africa Watching all the way from South Africa with Daniel. He says hi from South Africa. Just luck finding your channel really enjoyed it And he subscribed now as for the Huns trying to pinch our players We know where our market is to me. It's clear that they are watching us and any good player a good player Price, it's down in the Huns. Well, thanks for watching, Daniel, and hi from from us to you in South Africa. Johnny Boy also goes on to say, honestly, it's pathetic that attempt by the Huns to make a headline and a name for themselves and try and hijack our bid. They can't afford them. Small time embarrassment. They are just an embarrassment. Only the last. The breaking news, though, there is one player that is coming from Japan to. Rangers, and it says just breaking, and his name is, what's his name? Ah, that's it. There isn't one. 